This is Snack Break. I'm your host, Greg Travers. Today we have Colin McCabe, triathlete, father, and entrepreneur. He was the co-founder of Chopped, and he's been running that business for 20 years. And most recently, he's the founder of Free Rain, an enhanced sparkling water company. This is our inaugural Snack Magic podcast. Well, thank you very much. Um, as you said, you know, I've been in the restaurant business here in New York City for 20 years, uh, born and raised here in the city. Um, and a number of years ago, I saw an opportunity in the sparkling water space to start Free Rain. The story is much longer than that, uh, which I'll get into, but so much of it was just driven by my inspiration of time and nature. And as you said, yeah, you know, especially during the time when I was training for an Ironman, like I know you are right now, and running a lot of marathons, and I'm really into kiteboarding, I'm into surfing, although I'm a lousy surfer, and all that time in nature just made me think about you know, something else uh, um, in the food world that I could improve upon and maybe just do a little better. Amazing. So I think, you know, we can get started back, you know, 20 years ago when you, when you started Chopped, you know, it came out of, out of seeing an opportunity, you know, to eat better and, you know, fill your body with, with greens and not just burgers and everything else. Um, right. Kind of what have you taken from your days in Chopped and brought it to Free Reign? Yeah, well, Chop started with this idea, right? Now it's called Fast Casual, and that, and that term didn't even exist, right? But what my partner Tony and I, right, best friend from high school and college, saw at the time was there was nobody taking fast food and elevating it. And it was our thesis that were, people were starting to be more thoughtful about what they were eating, and, and especially in the world of vegetables. And... We saw an opportunity to take healthy food and make it intensely flavorful and what we say craveable and put it into more of a fast food format, again, now called fast casual. And I've taken that same kind of idea and applied it to beverage. So, you know, sparkling water is really popular. A lot of people are grabbing, gravitating towards it from soda. Um, but the thesis here is that people are more thoughtful about what they're putting into their body. So people who you know, are, are drinking sparkling water on certain occasions actually want it to do something helpful for them. It is not just empty calories. It is not just a, you know, a, a thoughtless act anymore. Everything that people consume is now done with some level of thought. And that's really what we're trying to address. Right, absolutely. And when you kind of speak about, you know, people in general, a big trend is purpose-driven lifestyle. I think Chopped and Free Rain have a lot of, you know, similar market share there is they're both really good things for you. What makes Free Rain, you know, good for you? So you have sparkling water. How is Free Rain different? Well, I, I, I say that uh, Free Rain is sparkling water with more, right? We really harness the power of nature here. And so what we do is we take sparkling water, really flavorful, sweetened with only fresh fruit juices, no added sugar, and add full doses of functional ingredients, uh, including adaptogens and nervines. And moreover, we address different st need states, right? So we have a tart cherry with Siberian ginseng. That's a full dose of Siberian ginseng, wow. right? And that's for energy. We have uh, blood orange and ginger uh, with ashwagandha for focus, with a full dose of ashwagandha. Um, and then finally, we have blackberry with passionflower, which is a nervine which has really calming effects. Again, really full doses and, and one single functional ingredient per, uh, per flavor. So, you know, it's easy to communicate. It's easy to understand when you're looking at the can and it's easy to feel because we're using really high doses. Amazing. And I'm sure, you know, whether it's the ginseng or the ashwagandha, you know, you're using the purest ingredients. That's right. Talk a little bit about, you know, product development. And I know, I think I was reading somewhere that like you tried it hundreds of times, you know, free reign before you were like, okay, this is what we're going to, you know, deploy. So speak to me about like, I guess, I wouldn't even say it's like a need for perfection, but like that is some heavy R&D. Yeah. So taking a step back, 
when I was training for that Ironman, when I was running these marathons and working at Chopped, I had two small kids at home. I realized, right, that if I was going to do any of those things well, I was going to have to reimagine my relationship with alcohol, right? So I said, you know what, I'm going to stop drinking. And when I did that, that's when I took a hard look at the beverage space as a whole. And, you know, I realized two things, right? Because my only option was sparkling water or water, but really I'm not a soda drinker. So really looking at sparkling water. And I noticed two things. And one is that there was room for more flavor in sparkling water. And two, that there was room for function in sparkling water. So, you know, a lot of these ingredients, oh, actually all of them, including the ashwagandha, the Siberian ginseng, the passion flower, were ingredients I was using in my training and personal life. And Mm. the idea was to take fresh fruit juice and these ingredients and go to my soda stream and work on these concoctions. And I realized pretty quickly that A, they they were tasting good, and B, I was starting to feel really good. And so I found this guy out in Brooklyn, really like a flavor magician, has done a lot of recognizable uh, beverage brands. We spent about six months hitting what I call the sweet spot, right? Which was 25 calories, clean label, no added sugar, with with a flavor that was accessible, but really craveable so that when you drank it, you would want to finish the whole can of it, right? That was the test. Would you want to finish the whole can of it? You know, a lot of sparkling waters, I'll take a sip and, you know, some I like more than others, but I'll take a sip, I put it down and I forget about it. And I was trying to solve for that in in many ways. And one of the reasons it took so long is because we are using high doses of these functional ingredients. Now, these ingredients they don't have great flavor, right? Ashwagandha doesn't taste good. Right. Uh, yep. So we really, and I didn't want to break the 25 calorie threshold and I certainly didn't want to add sugar. So that was like, that was kind of the dance in us arriving at that final formula. How do you deliver this, these powerful doses yet still making it taste really great? Amazing. And this might be kind of jumping a little bit ahead, but do you still work with that same person for future product iterations or did they kind of get you to to take off and then you you have I, was on, I was on the phone with them earlier today we are oh i love that we're working on two new flavors that address two new need states i'm really excited about uh what's coming down the line they taste great that that i think the needs that we're addressing are um certainly novel in this space and so you know, that'll be one will launch in the summer and one will launch in the fall. And uh, yeah, so we're still in contact and you know, it's the creative process of creating these things, which I appreciate most. Yeah, absolutely. It very much is a process. And I want to speak about that. But one thing when we go just with raw potent ingredients or the purest ingredients, is it, you know, what is like the research? And this doesn't have to be included in the actual, you know, podcast. I am interested. It can, is it bad to drink five of the, you know, ashwagandha like beverages like in a day or like are, are there toxicity levels there's not toxicity levels it, it there's no toxicity levels with the toxicity levels with the amount that one would be drinking of these Got adaptogens it. i mean that's one of the yeah. great things about adaptogens they just they, they don't get toxic in fact not only the more you drink the better but the longer you drink them for so you know really the best case scenario you will feel the effects of it after drinking one. If you drink a calm, you will feel that sense of calm. But the more you drink it over time, the more adaptogens work. They work on something called the HPA access, helping the body really regulate and deal with external stressors. And you know, they, they are scientifically almost built uh, to be ingested over the long term. Wow, very neat, very cool. Um, cool. So going back to the process question, you know, I think personally, I think everything is done based on initiative. You need to take the first step, you know, speaking of like triathlons, you have to get in shape that's over and over and over, but you, whether, whether you, you know, book a race first and then get your body, you know, in, in order or you're in order already in that, you know, everything has a process. So maybe you can just speak to the process of building free reign, you know, so through maybe just speak about one of the products like what about the process gets you fired up yeah well we you know for just some 
background, it was really important to launch with three. So, because I wanted to address different need states and all need states in a part of a day, right? Sure. In every day we need energy at some point, we need focus at some point and we need calm. And for me, the process really started with the product first. Hmm. And so had this idea, I thought it was novel. Um, and so I started to play around with it. And, and I started developing the product and I knew that if I didn't get that product to a place where I was craving it, I, it wasn't worth starting a business around. And then once I felt comfortable that I had the product, I started thinking about, you know, the next few things that you really need to start a business, which I had learned the hard way right out of college and launching Chopped, which is you need access to capital, right? And you have to, a lot of friends and family who are, you know, willing to take a shot on you. You need a team, right? Because I, you know, I'm very, very involved in free reign, but involved in Chopped as well. And so really found a guy by the name of Russell Cohn, who is GM, air traffic control, kind of runs a lot of the day-to-day -day at free reign. And we've been working together for a year and a half now and have a great level and trust in him. And that's, that's really important. And then third, and I see this a lot with, you know, a lot of young entrepreneurs going into CPG um, distribution. And, and just because of my experience, you know, I think we had a little bit of a head start in getting distribution, but great, you've got the product, you have the money to, you have the money to produce the product, you've got a team of people who are fully invested and energized. Okay, now where do you sell it? Um, and so that was, that was an, that's a necessary uh, uh, obstacle to be overcome. And then beyond that, you know, I think you have to have a long-term vision, like what is the end goal here for us? And, and so while I'm very focused on the day-to-day -day things, right, the things that are not so much fun, right, uh, the unglamorous parts of it, sure. you know, getting better and better, you know, always in the back of my mind or when I'm going to sleep at night, I'm kind of thinking about that larger goal down the road. Right. And so I guess, what is that larger goal? I know we're always fighting for tomorrow and to be the best we can today. But, you know, is there, uh, like, what is, you know, the goal for free reign? Well, we, we want to be the global leader in accessible functional foods. And, and that's what we say. So, so, you know, again, a lot of hard work has to go into that, that sure. is a long way down the road, but you know, you want to make sure that everybody's rowing in the same direction. Completely. So that's our North star. Yeah, absolutely. And I think kind of piggybacking off of everyone rowing in the right direction, it is, you know, it takes a village. So sustainability. Yeah. What are you guys doing in regards to, you know, making the most sustainable um, product? Well, you know, this was, and I, I think we discussed this before, this was really important with me, much like in Chopped, when we started Chopped, it was really important for us to have a philanthropic um, aspect to the concept. And when I started Free Reign, that was the same, right? We also very important to me. And because so much of my inspiration comes from nature, right? Time in the water, time in the road, time on the road, time in the mountains. Um, it was really important that because I take so much energy and inspiration from nature that we help protect it through free reign. So we have a partnership with 1% for the planet. So every purchase of free reign goes to uh, support an environmental charity. Amazing. And, you know, we acknowledge that we're not perfect, but we're trying to make uh, positive impact and also positive decisions day in and day out. And I don't know if I showed you this, but on, on the can of free reign, right? Lots of, um, all small beverage companies are um, in sleeved cans. You have to get to a much larger scale in order to print. Mm. But we have a sleeved can, but we have so this, cool. which renders the can recyclable. Sleeved cans are not recyclable unless you wow. have that feature. And so, you know, that's a, it's, it's just an example of a way we're trying to be a little bit more thoughtful. It's um, definitely forward thinking, yeah. It's a beautiful um, can, beautiful sleeve, thank and you. in order that it does do good and you can recycle it, it's just added added bonus. But that's, uh, you know, and, and we're always thinking about the next thing to do. We launch a plant a tree program in the coming weeks. Um, so with every purchase, we'll plant a tree. Um, so, you know, and we have other uh, initiatives that we're thinking about in the future as well. So again, Amazing. you know, small steps, um, uh, which hopefully cumulatively add up to something much larger. Completely. That's why I said it takes a village. 
you know, everyone has to be thinking about this and has to be at the, at the, at the core of the decision-making. Um, why free reign in regards to a name? Yeah. Free reign really means like that our own freedom of expression, uh, in the natural world, our freedom of movement in the natural world, this idea that, you know, free reign is a tool really to help you perform uh, in any way. And for me, that's in the natural world, you know, so, so it's just, you know, it is a, it's about our own personal freedom of movement um, in nature. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. That's great. Um, And then kind of piggybacking off of that and like your core values like as a brand. So I'm sure sustainability be would, would be one. Maybe we can speak about your like ideology of like innovation. Cause clearly you're taking, you know, old sparkling water and enhancing it with like tons of innovation. So maybe we can just speak about like your core principles or what innovation means to you guys. Yeah, well, in, in terms of our core principles, it is, you know, it is be generous, it is innovate, it is keep it clean. Right. And it is to be, you know, better environmentally. Right. These are all things that we want. And then, you know, in regards to innovation, um, I think that there's so much room to press and and, and to play in the future in the world of of beverage and food uh, beyond that. And I think we're only starting to scratch the surface of the power and understanding the power of some of these ingredients. Um, And so our goal really is to educate people. I, I know that a lot of the people that we, that we are selling to or speaking to might not know all the attributes of ashwagandha or Siberian ginseng or passion flower or the, ne- or the next ingredients that we'll be introducing. But we really want to, and, and the onus is on us, in order to educate people about them, right? You know, I think there's a world of drinks out there which used pretty chemical ingredients in order to get a certain reaction out of people. And, and what we're saying is, you know, this stuff's found in nature and, um, and it tastes great. So, so that's ongoing. So, you know, we have a woman by the name of Rochelle Robinette. She's our in-house herbalist. She's a licensed herbalist. And, you know, she does a lot of you know, a lot of work with us in, in, in helping to get the message out about some of the properties of these ingredients. So cool. That's amazing. And I'm really excited to see what the summer and the fall bring in regards to the product innovations. You and I both. Um, yeah. <laughs> what do you think about, you know, and as a new brand, mm-hmm. a company like Snack Magic. Yeah. How is Snack Magic, you know, helping or, or or how how is free rain finding their flow within snack magic's ecosystem i mean straight up snack magic has been huge you know as soon as we were on the platform we saw unbelievable pickup um it's really hard for people in cpg to get to business right now people are not in their offices people are working from home and that is you know from the day of conception for this business i knew that this would be something that was great for people who are you know at their desk working in the office and the way that snack magic has allowed us to reach those people in a way that we otherwise couldn't has been really powerful and we're seeing it in the numbers as well so it's uh we're thrilled that's unbelievable and i'm i'm proud and i'm glad to uh to hear that um how like in regards to like the daily report and things of that nature do you have visibility into that like are you tracking the daily portal to see kind of which skews are moving uh, well, absolutely and you know we very quickly sold out of um of focus and calm and so we know we're already restocking that um yeah. so yeah every morning a really easy portal to to understand so exactly how many we're selling and how much we have left which is important so right. um yeah i'm a i'm a daily user for sure love that and love that that's so cool yeah glad to hear um in regards to you know the landscape of sparkling water and other i guess seltzers mm-hmm. you know where do you where do you see like your biggest you know opportunity 
you know, the sparkling water category is huge right now. Yeah. It's also unbelievably competitive, right? And, you know, food retail, a competitive business is, um, you know, very different from CPG. So I'm learning a lot along the way, which has been fun for me. Yeah. But I see within sparkling water, this kind of much smaller category of functional sparkling water. And, and there's a lot of entrance into this space, but I don't think anybody's really emerged as a leader yet. And, and obviously I'm thinking about all the ways uh, that free reign can emerge as that leader. But, you know, I think in a lot of ways, you're seeing people make the move from soda to sparkling water. You're starting to think, you're starting to see people who are thinking about maybe not drinking as much or taking a dry January or a sober Tober and what their options look sure. like. So I think, you know, I don't think soda is necessarily the option for those people. So yeah. I see a lot of opportunity for sparkling water to grow and specifically functional sparkling water. I love that. What advice do you have to, you know, entrepreneurs in the CPG space in 2021? You know, I, I've going back to what you're saying about what I see, you know, in, in general, what customers or, you know, people are doing in relationship to fitness and food, you know, people are trying everything and I've tried everything, you know, I've, yeah. I've tried everything for training reasons, for diet reasons, out of curiosity, because it's my business. Um, and the thing I would say is, you know, I, I think sometimes in an effort um, to address all these things, people make things too complicated. And, you know, at the end of the day, simplify everything. Simplify, simplify, simplify. You want to make things understandable for the person you're selling to. There's only so much mind space that people are, are willing to give you. You know, right? people mm -hmm. have full lives. Um, and if you have a message, and you think and you think the message is just right think about it again and simplify it if you have a product and you think the product is just right right but you know it might be too busy you know simplify it yeah there's just across the board so many mistakes that i've made and that i've seen by people almost you know for lack of a better term just getting a little too cute with things when really at the end of the day, it could be simple and in its simplicity will be more direct and compelling. Right. I love that. I think in like the age of information and just so many messages being thrown to us, That's our right. we're almost like looking for single words to be a complete ad as a billboard. And that's all we want. We want clear messages. Yeah, we want clear messages. And we, we really don't want to be confused because we already have so much going on. And, and so much of that is, you know, again, I've tried every kind of, you know, diet or supplement or, yeah. you know, again, just to try it. And the thing that really works for a consumer, for me, for you, is going to be that thing which you can incorporate into your daily life on an ongoing basis, where you don't have to sacrifice, where you're not hating the process, right? This will go to your... Ironman training too. You're going to have to be able to live with that training for a long time. You have to be able to live with your diet, with what you drink, with what you eat. And so that's like, that was really important to me with free reign. One something that this is, you, you'll want to pick this up at any time of the day. It tastes great. You're not sacrificing everything. You can be totally healthy, fit, flexible, all the goals that you want in your life without putting yourself through so much suffering and torture, right? It is, it is easier than you think it is, but it's right. got to be consistent. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Speaking of consistency, this is almost, I guess, kind of a, not really a free reign question, but somewhat just a personal question, you know, how have you, or how do you find balance between, you know, being an entrepreneur and, you know, a family man and also like mm -hmm. an athlete, a triathlete, it's my, my whole goal now in life is to find balance, you know, yeah. and, and um, you know, a lot of that is time management. It is the understanding that I can't control everything. Um, it is surrounding myself with great people to rely on, to do, you know, to do things um, that I can't otherwise do. I need to make time every day for my kids, for my wife, for my work, um, for myself, you know, in terms of fitness, um, et cetera. Sure. And 
know, I think I've been able to do it without really sacrificing anything um, because I just, I, I understand that it comes first, finding that level of balance. And um, I rely on other people, um, you know, to help me out when I need it. Yeah, absolutely. Balance is the answer. And the way that you do that is by giving people that need your time, the attention, giving yourself time to do whatever you need to do on your own, whether that's go out for a run or meditate or just really work in silence for two hours. Yeah. Um, I, you just need to answer to everyone, but like yourself is also a person in that equation that, that you need to answer to and you need to know like when to take time for yourself. Um, that's right. And also you only have, you know, 24 hours in a day, eight of which you're probably resting. You should you also need me. to build <laughs> people around you who you trust. Well, 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 good for you, because at 27 years old, I had absolutely no sense of balance in my life. I was, you know, yeah. I was to a fault, uh, 100% in all directions and yeah. uh, sometimes feeling like I was nowhere. Um, yeah, so I mean, we're still throwing a lot of stuff at the wall and, and, and seeing what's sticking. But hey, that's like, you know, that's, it. that's, the, yeah. that's the fun of it. That's experimentation. And, yeah, you know, how you yeah absolutely. So speaking of having 24 hours in a day. You know, what are you doing in your most ideal day? You have 24 hours. Oh, man. Um, what do I want to do or what do I do? I mean, you what know. are, yeah, yeah. What is your, what is Colin McCabe's best day ever? 24 hours. Uh, for me, it's, you know, up at 6 a.m. It's breakfast with the kids and my wife. It is, um, it is then time out on the water, kiteboarding. It is, um having a great lunch with friends and family it is time in the afternoon to this uh, i'm taking work out of this because this is yeah my, yeah it is uh time to paint um or draw or go for a walk yeah. it's then you know a great dinner again more time friends with family and then you know just a quiet evening maybe with some more time in nature or back on the water for a sunset surf session or kiteboarding yeah. session or a run in the hills. Um, and then a mellow night with my wife and family. I love it. My day would be very similar. A yeah. little bit of fitness, a lot of friends, good food. Yeah. That's pretty much, that's pretty much all you need. I love that. And I also, I think that question is so interesting because uh, you really, people get like, if they've never heard it before, they're like, what am I doing to make like my best day ever? Yeah. And it is funny. I've heard people talk about flights, like they're going to have lunch here and dinner there. Get it very complicated with as it. Long as, as long as I'm on the beach with those close to me and I can get in the ocean and, and I'm, I'm, I'm generally pretty happy. A happy camper then. Yeah, cool. I would love to kind of finish up on um, what you're like, kind of going back to like snack magic. Yeah, please. If you didn't have snack magic, you know, if free reign didn't have the channel of snack magic, mm -hmm. you know, where do you think that you would be right now? Um, you know, maybe there's other platforms. Maybe you would just be in stores. Maybe you would be on foot a lot more often. Like what, what are your, if there was no snack magic kind of, how would things be going? I mean, they'd be going well, you know, we, and, and because we launched during the pandemic, um, we really had to change around our go to market strategy. Um, so, you know, we, we ended up starting with a direct to consumer strategy. Then we went to food service through chopped and then we went to, um, natural grocery Erewhon. Um, and, you know, again, what was left out of that, which was really important to us was, you know, the people at work and that we were unable to reach. So, you know, we, we would be fighting without snack magic, right? We would be fighting for those customers in a, in a kind of painful scattershot way where snack magic just gave, gave us a huge platform to address a huge population um, in one go without, you know, without having spent a lot of time, money, effort um, in trying to reach those people. So it's been, it was just very effective and very tidy for us to have that single platform where people go to find us versus us having to go out and find everybody as they're scattered uh, throughout the country. I love that. That's, that's really so amazing. And I think that is really at the heart of it. 
like what snack magic is doing it's providing a lot of a lot of happy recipients who are working from home they miss their their colleagues they miss their commute whatever else and now they're getting an invitation to a snack box at first you're like oh a snack box it's always just you know half stuff i like half stuff that i really don't want and then you're like no you can 100 percent customize it and you and you're not picking between you know oreos and and hershey's it's amazing niche that's right purposeful driven companies and then it comes to your house three days later now, and i think that's the whole thing it's a fantastic service i remember early on in the pandemic um when just getting groceries was a much more painful experience we were yeah, getting hectic we were ordering these boxes of groceries and this was before i knew snack magic and I mean, the whole family would just rush to the, these boxes to open them up because we never knew what was in there. And it was like this unbelievable, what we call in the restaurant business, surprise and delight. <laughs> um, so when I think of Snack Magic, I think of an unbelievable way for employers who are not with the people in their company uh, to really surprise and delight everybody. And that's, uh, you know, it's a... Uh, it, it, it's hard to do that and it's an ability uh, that snack magic has so it's 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 powerful